Hello everyone, it's week three of the watercolour prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, and the challenge this week is negative painting. Um, we want you to do any kind of negative painting using watercolours or watered down acrylics, any type of um, watercolour media or water soluble media of your choice. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you like, but just to explain basically what it is, um, it's a technique where you outline a shape. It can be any shape, it could be Simple, uh, something as simple as a circle or a leaf, um, a tree, a mountain, houses, you know, whatever you want to do. Now, I'm keeping mine fairly small. I've got this piece of leftover watercolour paper, leftover from the um, coins that I was doing last week. What does it measure? It is just under six inches by, what's this, about five and a half, five and a quarter. So there we go. It's, um, you know, not any particular size. It's just what I had left over. And you can see here that I've taped it down to um, one of those plastic um, chopping boards using some masking tape. And that's because I'm going to be using plenty of water and um, I don't want it to move. I also want the um, flexibility of being able to, able to move it around as well to make it easier for myself. Now I've got um, a couple of buckets of water and I'm going to start off by using um, a wide brush and I'm just going to apply plenty of water just just like this. Let me just grab myself um, a microfiber cloth. I've probably got um, a bit too much water there. Let's um, just wipe some of it off. And I'm going to be using brushos again this week. I've got lemon and turquoise. Um, I want to keep my base layer really light and um, you should do the same too because the idea with this is that you just get gradually um, darker as your painting develops. So I'm just going to apply um, just a small amount of colour like this. I want um, a bit of texture in this. Let me apply a tiny bit more um, lemon just so that um, I've got um, a bit of contrast in there. In fact, we can dab around with the paintbrush just to get some texture going on. And I'm just going to set this aside to dry. I might speed the process um, along with my um, heat tool, um, but important to dry that first layer before we do anything else. I'm just applying a bit more of that lemon just because I want um, some texture in my background. But as you can see, I'm keeping this really light and by the time it's dried, um, it will be um, lighter, lighter still. I've given my first layer um, a dry with my heat tool, so it's now dry to the touch. Um, and I've just um, chomped out some circles. I've used um, some of my craft punches here in two, uh, three different sizes. I've got two and a half, two inch, and um, my one inch punch. And I'm just going to use um, a watercolor pencil just to draw these shapes like like this. I'm going fairly lightly. I don't want um, too bold an outline. So I'm just going to try and keep this as simple um, as I can. So there we go. Um, and now what I want to do is pop some of those same colours that I'm going to use. Let's get, get rid of those um, bristles that have appeared on my plate. So I'm just going to spray some water um, on here. Um, let me just grab a couple of paint brushes. I've got some here to my right hand side. So I'm just going to water some paint down like this. I might want it to be a tiny bit um, darker, darker than that. And I'm going to put some lemon on the other side um, as well. Let me just grab a different um, paintbrush. Here we go. And we'll water some of some of this down. Oh, that was the turquoise. Silly me. It doesn't matter. It really, really doesn't matter just so that we've got some uh, different values. In fact, that's more of a green and that's absolutely um, okay. Let me just move that um, out of the way. And what I am going to do, in fact, what I might do is grab a slightly thicker paintbrush because I've got um, a lot of um, area here to, um, to paint in. What I'm going to do is just go around my circles like, like this and just fill in the area around those lines that um, that I've drawn here, like, um, like this. I might need to um, add a bit more. I'm just going to carefully go around the outside of this circle to start off with. Um, and because I've got my, um, my watercolour paper taped down, it makes it really easy for me to move my paper around as well, which I just find much, much easier to um, work with. So there we go. And then we can quickly fill in the outside 
like this. My tape is quite old and clearly coming um, unstuck and that's okay, that's absolutely um, fine. So I'm just going to go around um, like this, keeping it really, um, really wet. So let's add some more of that lemon. Here we go. And we can um, apply some more water like this. Let's add some um, lemon into the equation. And again, I'm just going to go around that um, smaller circle here. Like, like this, trying to blend it um, into the turquoise that I've got um, there already. And um, we can go around this one here as well. Just like this, trying to blend those colours, trying to work as quickly as you can because, um, you know, you want to keep it wet so that you don't end up with any harsh, harsh lines. Let me just um, move that around. My first layer is dry and I have had to reapply some masking tape because mine is old and clearly not very strong and it just completely peeled off. Um, and you need to make sure that your paint is completely dry before you apply another layer. So what I'm going to do this time is just add some um, more circles. So what shall I do? I'm just going to add another one here like, um, like this. So we'll have a, a really large one. There we go. Um, in fact, that's a medium sized one. We'll have another medium sized one here like like this, not um, eating into any of the circles that um, are already there. And we can have one here like this as well. And I think I'm just going to leave that be um, and just paint around those areas as well. So what shall we do this time? We'll have some more of that turquoise. I'm just going to put plenty um, here on my palette some of that um, lemon like this and again let's just um, mix up some of that paint and the idea is this time that we go slightly darker than the layer we had on um, before so let's mix in some of that um, lemon you see I've got some of the green in there and that's absolutely um, fine but as I've said I do want it um, slightly darker than the layer I had on before so let's just add a little bit more pigment just so that we've got um, a stronger value than the one that we had on before. Let me just um, make sure I've got plenty of room on my table and of course because I've got this on a glass palette um, now it just makes it easier for me to move things around. I've switched from the plastic that I was working on um, before just because when I took my um, painting off to dry I've misplaced it somewhere it's gone missing but I'm just going to really, really carefully go around the outside here like like this, just moving my palette around. Just really carefully painting around those circles. Let me just press press that down there like that. If it goes underneath my um, my tape, I'm not particularly bothered. It's just to try and hold it um, flat on this um, this palette. This is just a piece of glass left over from um, an old picture frame, and I've put um, duct tape around the outside just to stop me cutting myself on any of, of the sharp sharp edges. I'm going to add some of that green in there now as well, just so that we've got a bit of uh, contrast. And again, just being really careful to make sure I don't go over those those lines. You could use a smaller paintbrush if you if you wanted to. Use whatever um, is easiest for you.
that layer is now dry as well. And so I'm going to add my third layer of circles. So we'll have one here like, um, like this. How do I want to um, do this? Like so. Try not to overthink where you're you're putting putting them. We'll have one there, and we can have one here, like so. And do I want one more? Perhaps we'll have one here um, as well. And again, I'm just going to fill in that negative space. Now I need to get darker again. Now I've used turquoise and lemon so far. I'm going to add in some leaf green, which is a slightly darker green. Here we go, we'll have some of that. And also some ultra marine blue, just because I want those values to be darker um, yet again. So there you can see that that's um, much darker this time. Um, and so is, um, is that one there. And again, I'm just going to very carefully fill in that negative space. I might go for a smaller brush this time. Here we go. We'll go for this one, this one here. Did I say that um, these are IKEA brushes? I got them from the um, kids department um, in, in IKEA in a set of, um, I don't know, I think it was five or six and they were really, really inexpensive, but they're just really nice brushes to work with. And so here we go. I'm just going to carefully just go around this next layer of, of circles. Now, it's really important that you dry um, your pages and um, your circles thoroughly um, in between, because otherwise it's just going to bleed and you'll end up with a really horrible um, mess. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that I've got that um, that masking tape firmly pressed down. It really doesn't want to stick. So let's add one more layer of circles. I'm going to add one here like, like this. We can add another one here, whoops. Where else do I want them to, um, to go? One here. Another one here, like um, like that. And do I want to do any more, or leave leave that be? Can maybe have one more. Whoops. Here, like that. So again, I just need to fill in the rest of that um, that negative space. We could perhaps have another circle here like um, like that. Now we need to get darker again. So what have I got? I'm going to add some of the black to my blue. This is my absolute last layer. So this um, needs to be really, really dark. I like that. And in fact, do I want to add that um, dark shade all over or shall I add some black to that green um, as well? Let's see what that looks like just so that we've still got um, a little bit of contrast you see I like that and again I'm just going to fill in all of these um, negative um, areas so we'll start off in this corner here like this can you see what um, what I'm doing let me just keep my fingers crossed that um, I've dried my paper properly
Now I'm going to attempt to take this masking tape um, off. Let's see if I can do this. I'm just peeling it um, away from my paper like this. Take this side off as well. I'll do the same, same thing, just so that it doesn't tear my paper. It's not particularly sticky as we know anyway. There we go. We've got a bit of bleeding there, but that's um, that's fine. We can maybe touch that up with a Posca, Posca pen. But for a first attempt, I think that's pretty cool. Now I'm just using a tiny amount of um, white gouache to try and tidy up my edges. I've already given it one, one layer on this corner here. And that's tidying that up really nicely. This is just the um, Talons brand of gouache. And so I'm just going to go all the way around the outside like this, um, just to give it a quick tidy up where it's bled underneath the masking tape. I think that looks um, a lot, a lot neater. And then I've got to decide whether I want to do anything to tidy up my circles where I've been impatient and that's bled as well. Now I'm trying to tidy up where my pieces have bled just using some of the Arteza watercolour pencils like, like this, just to try and blend the colours in a little bit better around the edge like, um, like this. And that, I think, is making a big difference. So I'm just going to keep going until I'm happy, happy with it. Well, here is my finished negative space um, painting, and I'm actually quite happy with it. Um, for a first attempt, I don't think that has turned out too bad. Um, I have gone around some of the lines to try and sort of, you know, blend out where um, it's bled, um, just purely because of my impatience and not waiting long enough in between each layer for it to dry. And the way that I did that was by using a mixture of gouache on the very, very dark areas, um, and then using a mixture of the Brusho watercolours and also my Arteza um, watercolour pencils as well. Um, so that has really well and truly tidied um, that up. I've used gouache as well to um, try and get um, um, straighter edges where it bled underneath the masking tape. It didn't make any difference whether I had um, the masking tape taped down to that cutting board or my glass mat. It just bled um, underneath. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, and if it wasn't for the fact that I was going away for the weekend, I think I would give this um, another a try and I may give it another whirl um, when I come back next week um, but I hope you've got the gist of um, what negative painting um, is all about and um, how to do it so I look forward to seeing everybody's interpretations in the group this week I think the good thing as I've said before with these challenges um, is that it um, forces us outside of our comfort zone I am no expert um, when it comes to watercolours I'm, I'm a complete novice and you know to be honest um, sometimes I find them really Really intimidating. Um, so I just hope it gives you some encouragement to just give things a go. It really doesn't matter if they don't turn out perfect, you know, like mine, you know, there's lots of um, areas, lots of room for improvement, shall we say. But it was fun. It was really good fun. So if you've enjoyed my video today, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. If you'd like to follow along with this month's um, watercolour challenge um, and prompts, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, The Mixed Media emporium in the description box below don't forget to go and check out kylie's video this week as well and see how she's decided to interpret the prompt but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and i'll see you all again soon bye for now